Well, creativity is in the nonlinearities, right? But productivity is in the implementation of linearities. I mean, that's that's what is absolutely clear. This is why I think we were talking earlier about why a formal rigorous training in something where other people are looking at you and telling you, no, not good enough, go back and do it again. There's real value to that because otherwise it's just ideas. It's just vapors. You know, one the thing that Matt mentioned uh, is the study that they're working on is as opposed to, I think most of the psychedelic studies they've done is on uh, how to treat different conditions. And one of the things they're working on now is to try to do a study where uh, for creatives, for people that don't have a condition that they're trying to treat, but instead see how this, how psychedelics can help you create. So like- Goodness, if you take creatives and you give them more psychedelics, they're not gonna be able to get out of their room. I, I don't. You know? Well, but this is the, I maybe you can speak to that, uh, psychedelics or not, or dreams or tools in general, how to be better creatives. That's an interesting, I don't often see studies of this nature of like how to take high performers in the mental creative space and get them to perform even uh, better. So it's not average people, it's like masters of their craft, like taking, uh, I mean, his examples was taking an Elon Musk, which is in the engineering space and maybe musicians and all that kind of stuff and studying that. That's a, I mean, that's weird. I Usually the science, uh, the scientific exploration there has been done in uh, by the musicians themselves as right. has been documented. Like the, jazz oh, is like all non-linearities, yeah. right? But if it's, but the people still have to know how to play their instruments. Right, right. There's some early, early skill building that's critical. I mean, when you mention someone like Elon, I mean, virtual. I mean, he's already a virtuoso, right? Because he and in so many different domains. I've never met him, but it's it's clear, right? He, it's not just that he's ambitious and bold and brave and all that. It's all that, and there's there's clearly a, a different way of looking at the same problems that everyone else is looking at. And people are probably banging their head against the refrigerator thinking like, think differently, think it doesn't yeah. work that way. It involves, there's a certain anxiety in for the, I'm not talking about for Elon, but I don't have no idea. But I think for somebody who's very structured, very regimented, very linear, the anxiety comes from letting go of those linearities. And for the person that's very creative, the anxiety comes from trying to impose linearities, right? The, the really creative artist or musician, they're, they seem nuts. They seem like they can't get their life together because they can't. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, we look at people who are kind of pseudo Asperger's or Asperger's or some forms of autism, and they are so hyper linear, but you take away those linearities and they freak out. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the essence of some of those syndromes. So I think that the ability to toggle back and forth between those states is what's remarkable. I mean, because we're here and we're having this discussion. I mean, Steve Jobs is a good example. He probably the best example of somebody who actually talked about his own process, mm -hmm. about the merging of art and science, art and engineering, humanities and science. Very few people can do that. Well, I-, I You seem to have a capacity to do that. I, I, like you, you know poetry and you are AI guy. Like you, there's nothing linear about poetry as far as I can tell. 